Welcome to Body Points Mounting Hardware Solutions presentation. My name is Lori Lazat, and I am the Director of U.S. Sales here at Body Point. Today's presenter is Kathleen Simpson, uh, who is Director of B2B Sales here at Body Point. Kathleen has a master's degree in clinical exercise physiology, specializing in cardiopulmonary rehabilitation and preventative care. She's went, been with Body Point since 2004 and has spoken at many rehab conferences uh, worldwide, including Asia, India, and Australia. And uh, Kathy has a, uh, a plethora of knowledge regarding uh, wheelchairs worldwide and is very familiar with the challenge of attaching postural solutions or postural supports to a multitude of wheelchairs. So Kathy, thank you for being here today. And with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to you. Well, thank you, Lori, for the kind introduction. And we are talking about how to attach postural supports and the hardware needed to do that, the attachment hardware. And you think, well, gosh, why, why are we doing this? And the point is, have you ever tried to mount a postural support? You're there with the client and you discover you don't have the right attachment hardware or you don't have the right hardware to attach the belt or the postural support in the place that the therapist would like you to attach it. So what we are, I hope we'll discover today is that Body Point offers the widest range of mounting hardware solutions. And we do this specifically to fit chairs worldwide. And essentially, we're going to talk first about pelvic supports. And before we get into attachment hardware for pelvic supports, I want to make a distinction between a safety belt and a postural support. We're all very familiar with safety belts. We get in our cars every day, we put on our seat belt, you get in airplanes, you put the seat belt on. Those belts are not designed to correct your posture at all. Uh, the car belt is designed so that if you have to slam the brakes or you get into an accident, it's going to keep you from smashing into the wind windshield and, and hurting yourself more. Or if you're on an airplane and there's bad turbulence, it'll keep you from hitting the, 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 the ceiling of the True. airplane. So essentially, that's a safety belt. And a postural support, if we take a look at the, at the woman sitting in the chair on the right, uh, she's got a two-point body point padded belt on. And it's at about 70 degrees, the placement. And it's, it's put there, the therapist instructed it to be put there, placed there, so that she doesn't have posterior pelvic tilt. She doesn't start sliding out of the chair, which had been an issue for her. It's also placed where it is across the top of the thighs. It, it helps to keep her thighs a little more parallel rather than widely splayed. And in her case, that was something that the therapist uh, wanted to achieve. So a therapist will look at a belt or a postural support and have a clinical need that they are trying to deal with with the postural support. And that's a key difference with a postural support. Body Point, as you may know, makes all kinds of, of belts. We have non-padded belts. We have two-point padded belts. We have four-point padded belts. And we have my personal favorite, the EvaFlex. And we're going to look at how to attach any of these belts. To attach a belt, you first have to start with an infitting, an infitting that's going to attach um, onto the chair. In 2003, Body Point patented the cinch mount, this metal, metal uh, buckle that, that you weave the webbing through and it will keep the belt, the webbing in place. We also have a flat mount and the cinch mount, I just want to contrast to a cam buckle. It's not a cam buckle and I'll, I'll show you some of the features of why and how it works differently. Essentially, first though, we have the flat mount. Here's a flat mount attached to a wheelchair. You notice that the webbing is threaded through, so it has to thread through the three bar slide, it threads through the flat mount, it comes back up, but it's not just two passes. It takes a final pass to, of the 
of the webbing to thread back through in what we call the locking stitch. And if you do that, we know that this will pass the uh, ISO standards testing for postural supports. So the client will be perfectly secured in their wheelchair. Here's the cinch mount, a little bigger picture where you can see how it's quite different from a cam buckle. You see this knurled um, bar here and it provides a little bit of texture against the webbing. You notice that there's also teeth in the top of the cinch mount so that when you thread the webbing through, adjust it to the size and the length that you need for your client and you close it. When you close it, you'll hear an audible sound. It's like there's a click and you can hear it. You know that it's quite secure. And we know that this cinch mount will also pass the standards for postural supports. So when I talk about the ISO standards for postural supports and the testing related to that, what, what am I talking about? So essentially, here's a picture of, of one of the test fixtures set up for uh, the ISO test. Uh, you can see that it's kind of curved. It's the, the fixture is the shape of a pelvis. Uh, the belt is on there. The size of that pelvis will vary depending upon the size of the belt. We've put a little blue mark here on the webbing uh, before the test. And then it goes through a thousand repetitions at a, a specified force. And the force may vary depending on the size of the belt. But let's look at a video of that testing. As you see, there's a lot of force that is applied. And after a thousand repetitions, if you look here on the right, there was the original blue mark. Well, after all after 100 repetitions, the body point belt slipped just two millimeters in the repetitive test. Now we have tested um, some of our competitors' belts. We'll just call this brand X over here. And you can see after the same, the same test that there's considerable amount of slippage here. This does not pass the test. And why is this important? Why would, why would we care about this? Well, if you have a client who has high tone, a client who is moving and fussing in that chair all the time, if, if it's slipping, it's not going to hold the client in place. It's not going to keep the client positioned and keep them out of a, pelvic, a posterior pelvic tilt or whatever it is that the therapist is trying to uh, correct with the, with the belt and the positioning belt. And th this is, this is um, particularly uh, important when you have clients uh, that are high tone and, and, and quite difficult. Um, people always ask me, well, is this slippage taking place? Is it taking place here at the buckle? Is it taking place at the infitting? Is it taking place because the webbing is very slick? And the answer can be all of the above. Uh, but this is why we test our belts that is inclusive of the, the webbing, the buckles, and the hardware that we're talking about today. And before I talk about the placement of the belts and the attachment hardware, I just want to step back a little bit to give you some clinical relevance of why it's important to place the postural support in the most optimal position for the client. Let's look at the human body. Here we have a, a drawing of a pelvis from the side. You notice that we have our ischial tuberosities, the IT, and right, right above it, a little bit in front, a little bit in interior to that, is the trochanter. Now, I think of the trochanter, I think of it as sort of the hinge point. If you're sitting, it's sort of the hinge point that allows you to move forward and back. And why is that important? Why is that relevant to this discussion? Well, let's look a little closer here at a human a model of a human pelvis. Human beings were designed to be bipedal animals. We are designed to walk around on the earth. We were not designed to sit all day in front of a computer, <laughs> sit all day in a wheelchair. And if, if we were designed for that, um, we, 
our creator, he or she certainly would not have created a, an ischial tuberosity that sticks down 30 to 40 millimeters uh, below the bum when you're sitting. Uh, as we all know, that that just sets you up for pressure sores and uh, loss of skin integrity. So what does this have to do with the belt? Well, most manufacturers, wheelchair manufacturers, will place an attachment point right here where the back and the seat uh, meet. And when you attach a belt there, it is at a 45 degree angle. Now notice that this belt at a 45 degree angle, when it's placed there, it's in back of the trochanter. It's also rubbing up against the abdomen, the front of the abdomen, right where your bladder is. Now, a postural support for it to work well, it must be tight. It can't be loose. So a tight belt all day, right over the bladder, this is not the most comfortable thing. But more importantly, is that it doesn't allow for a pressure relief. Now we know that wheelchair users need to have a pre pressure relief off of the ITs many times a day. But if you take a, a belt and you place it at about 70 to 90 degrees, somewhere in this range, what you'll find that's in front of the trochanter, what does that mean? That means that if you lean forward, you can, off, you can offload the ITs just enough, just enough to give you a pressure relief. And that's vitally important to the client. It also allows the client to lean forward farther, gives you more function. You can open a door handle or reach something that is on a desk in front of you or a surface in front of you. So it not only provides the opportunity for pressure relief several times a day and throughout the day, it provides more options to be more functional. So in attaching these belts, you notice here's this two-point belt. It's over, uh, it's at about 70 degrees. It's over the top of the thighs. Uh, when that's tight, that that's much more comfortable than having it against the abdomen. And if you notice with this four point belt, again, the primary strap is right in front of the trochanter. This means even though there's a secondary strap here, what this is for, it's attached back here at 45 degrees, the purpose of this secondary strap is just to hold the primary strap in place. So if you have someone that's always pushing against that primary strap, has a lot of high tone, that might be a time that you use a four-point belt. But what's important is when the when even in this configuration, the person can still lean forward and offload those ITs. So even with a four-point belt in this configuration, you can do that. The other thing is that some, sometimes you have clients who are have an asymmetric posture. And your asymmetric postures, particularly when they're flexible, um, you can do a lot with postural supports. Uh, I see this with children all the time. Uh, therapists will take their hands and they'll hit the, get the child in the chair and, and sort of push them and get them right where they want. And basically what we tell therapists is, okay, look at where your hands are, attach the belt in those points. So what this, this illustration is trying to do is show you someone with the right hip, uh, an obliquity, they're trying to, with the belt, push that part of the hip down and hold it down. That's at 45 degrees? Yes, it is. Look at the rest of the belt. The front, uh, the left side of the belt is coming up all the way to about 90 degrees. And so what different attachment hardware does, particularly if you can attachment on many different points of the chair, is allow the therapist to use the postural support in the most optimal way for the client. Now, let's talk about <laughs> the actual attachment hardware. It used to be that wheelchairs throughout the world, virtually they were all on round tubular frames. The tubular frames were uh, one inch or seven eighths or 25 millimeters, 22 millimeters. Well, that made it quite simple. Body Point designed this frame saver clamp. And essentially this frame saver clamp, if you notice the circumference here is 25 millimeters. The shim that goes in it is 22 millimeters. So it, it fit virtually every wheelchair in the world. We would take frame savers, 
put them in the package with our belts, put them in the package with our harnesses, ship them out knowing that, that the technician had what they needed to attach the, the, the postural support to the wheelchair. Um, but then wheelchair manufacturers started changing things. But first, let's look at this video and see how the frame saver is attached and how it works. With the frame saver clamp, belt mounting is a breeze. Incredibly strong, it simplifies mounting accessories anywhere along a tube without drilling a hole in the wheelchair. This super tough nylon clamp can be snapped in place and tightened securely, but will not damage tube finishes. It fits popular 25mm tubing and includes a 22mm shim. A 19mm shim can be ordered separately. This high strength nylon clamp can support 500 kilograms without breaking. As I mentioned, wheelchair manufacturers started changing the design of wheelchairs. Lots of manual chairs now have many different sizes. You can see that this one looks even uh, almost an oval shape or certainly bigger than 25 millimeters. Most of the power chairs uh, now, or the newer ones, have slotted seat rails for attachment. And if you take a look at manual chairs, uh, many manual chairs still have some 25 mill millimeter tubing, but if you take a look, many of these uh, manufacturers also have 32 millimeter tubes. You've got Sunrise has uh, one that is 27 by 33 millimeters. It's an oval shape. So Body Point had to come up with a solution that would work other than a frame saver clamp. And I came up with the band clamp. This is a stainless steel clamp, really quite clever. And well, let's watch the video and see how it works. Tackle your toughest mounting challenges with the Body Point stainless steel band clamp. This clamp is strong, versatile, and corrosion resistant. The flexible stainless steel band fits into tight gaps under seat upholstery, yet clamps securely in place. The independent clamping nut and accessory screw make it easy to change mounted accessories without losing the clamp's position. The band clamp is available to fit in six different sizes from 22 to 32 millimeter. This tough stainless steel clamp has a breaking strength of over 1200 kilograms to fit your most demanding wheelchair applications. Another solution is the aluminum frame clamp. This fits 7 8 and 1 inch tubing or 22 millimeter, 25 millimeter tubing. But what's interesting about it is it works uh, with manual chairs that have uh, a, a sling upholstery and so that it can fit in just underneath the sling upholstery. Well, let, let's look at the video and see how that, how that works. Clamp around obstructions with our aluminum frame clamp and put your postural support where you need it. Unlike U-shaped and one-piece clamps, this two-piece open jaw clamp fits even under seat upholstery or seat back gussets, letting you mount exactly where you want. Independent clamping and accessory screws make it easy to change mounted accessories without losing the clamp's position. The frame clamp is available in sizes to fit 25 millimeter or 22 millimeter tubing. Made of high strength anodized aluminum and stainless steel, it ensures a long life in the most demanding environments and can support 350 kilograms. Another excellent solution, actually one of my favorites, is the seat mounting bracket. We have two styles of seat mounting brackets, one at 90 degrees and one at 20, 20 degrees. And the idea of the 90 degree bracket is it fits on top of solid seat bases. And the 20 degree uh, bracket is mounting around the curve of tubing. Um, well, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Let's, uh, let's watch a video and see how this works.
As you saw in the video, the 90 degree bracket fits nicely on top of seat upholstery. I particularly like these because this makes the attachment point very, very close to the user. The closer you can get the attachment point of the belt to the user, the, the, really the better the application of the belt. There's not, there's not uh, much room for slack. It's going to fit very, very nicely. The 20 degree uh, clamp, you can see it just here uh, around the side of a tube. It can also be used in some cases, some, um, you notice some attachment uh, holes here, pre-drilled pre holes in the side of some chairs. Uh, oftentimes you can use the 20 degree seat uh, clamp seat frame for that. But now let's talk about power chairs. As I said, most of our power chairs now have slotted seat rails or many of them do. And you, this shows a cinch mount attached to a slotted seat rail. There's, there's a bolt in here. The head of the bolt is in the slot and then the bolt sticks out with a nut attaching to it. You can see it works quite well. And what's very nice is you can often slide and get just exactly the right angle that you want on, this, on the uh, slotted rails. You can also attach a flat mount to the slotted rails again with the head of the bolt in the slot and with the bolt coming out and a washer, a flat mount, and a nut to attach. Our T-slot fastener kits come in a six millimeter head here and a 10 millimeter head. Um, let's take a look at how they attach. So on this chair, the instruction I've been given is to mount the hip belt about 20 centimeters from the backrest. So I'll measure off that position and using some ordinary uh, masking tape, mark the location along the frame. So my goal is to mount the hip belt at this location, which has been deemed appropriate to fit the user. Using the quarter turn nut, you simply insert it, rotate it 90 degrees into position, add the six millimeter washer, and then you can attach the hip belt. Now we can attach the Eva Flex or flat mount end fitting, or in this case, I'll use a hip belt with a cinch mount ready to go. The webbing has been fed through. So simply place the cinch mount over the stud and finish with the nut. And 10 millimeter socket wrench is a perfect fit. Snug up on the nut. And then with the wheelchair user seated, you can adjust the belt to length and close and snap the cover on the cinch mount. And you're done. This is an Invacare power chair, which has the new Modulite T-slot system. This is a 10 millimeter T-slot measuring the height. The same dimension of T-slot can be found on Pride Quantum power chairs. Permobile, however, has a six millimeter T-slot. And so we have another fastener kit, which is called the HKA6. The HKA6 is very similar to the HKA10, except it replaces the quarter turn nut and stud with a simple uh, six millimeter hex head cap screw. For installation, you simply insert the head of the screw into the hole, slide it into position, and then add the washer and the end fitting and the nut as I previously demonstrated. As you saw in the video, uh, there are different manufacturers. We see six millimeter slots, 10 mil millimeter slots. There may be others. You may try using a bolt that's in your, your kit. That's fine. Um, just make sure it's really quite secure when you're using that attachment. We have 
um, actually four different options here. The HKA6, six is standing for this six millimeter slotted rail at dash 12. That means that this bolt is 12 millimeters long. This works with our metal in fittings, the flat mount and the cinch mount. We also have an HKA10 dash 14. So this is for a 10 millimeter slotted rail and then has a 14 inch bolt sticking out to accommodate the flat mount, the metal flat mount, and the metal cinch mount. We also have some hardware that are a plastic cinch mount and a plastic um, flat mount. These are used with our uh, multi-directional, our MD shoulder harnesses. This is the pivot fit, the stay flex, and the trim line. These come, you can opt, you can choose to have one of these uh, with your harness. So the, the issue here is that the thickness of the plastic is a little thicker than the thickness of the metal. So that means if you're working with a power chair that has six millimeter slotted rails, you then need this HKA6, but the dash 14, 14 millimeters long so that this bolt then accommodates for the extra thickness of either the, the plastic cinch mount or plastic flat mount. Same thing if you have a 10 millimeter slotted opening. You need the HKA 10 dash 19, 19 millimeters to accommodate for the extra thickness of the plastic in fittings. So when you're going to order these um, these bolt these T-slot fasteners. You can look at bodypoint.com for the latest information of which brands fit. So you're looking here, the Permobile, um, Alley Rehab, Netty. They both have uh, six millimeter slotted rails. Invacare, Quant, Quantum Motion Concepts. They have ten millimeter slotted rails. There are many other chairs out there. Again. If you have a question about this, please consult bodypoint.com and you can find that in the latest information that we have. So now I want to switch gears here and talk about the Bodypoint EvoFlex. You notice that the Bodypoint EvoFlex has stiffened sides, so it doesn't have webbing at the, at the base. It has stiffened sides, and what's magical about that is that the, the belt when open doesn't fall down in the wheel wells. It doesn't fall in the wheels. It doesn't fall in the filthy ground. When you're trying to get the, the client back in the chair or the client's trying to get back in the chair, they don't have to fish around looking for the belt on, on, on the ground. Instead, you can, you can move this belt a little bit forward, a little bit back. It uh, accommodates easily for transfers. But how do you attach this? Well, you can see a little closer up here, the stiffened sides has many holes in it. It comes with these low profile fasteners and that comes with the EvoFlex. And then you can attach it in many different ways. You can use the seat mounting bracket. You can use the uh, band clamp. Uh, if you've got a ma manual chair and it's got a, a side guard, you can even drill a hole in the side guard and attach it attach it there. If you're dealing with a power chair with a slotted braille, again you take a look at the T-slot fasteners and they uh, fasten nicely with the EvaFlex. Now there are some cases, particularly when we have extra thick cushions or contoured seat cushions, we found that the EvaFlex might not be quite long enough. So we've made the EvoFlex belt extenders. And well, to best understand that and how these work, let's watch this video. I'd like to show you our new EvoFlex belt extender. For the fitting of any belt, you start by determining the best place where you want to apply the pads and the direction that you want the belt to tension in. In this case, I'm imagining I want the belt over my thighs and pulling backwards behind my hips at about 70 degrees. So following that angle, I'm going to take a flexible tape measure and measure across the soft tissue on my thighs. And 
I'm finding that about a 46 centimeter belt is going to be an appropriate fit. So I've got that belt and as you can see the end of it is too short to reach any appropriate mounting place on the chair. However, we have a new solution, the EvaFlex belt extender. That will allow me to reach a mounting hole. So knowing that I want to mount in this position, I would normally mark the frame of the chair with a piece of tape and then measure the distance from the tape to the backrest. It's about eight centimeters. So that's the location where I want to mount. For the purposes of the video, I've already mounted a band clamp in that position. Now I'll show you how to do the installation. The EvaFlex belt extender joins to the end of the EvaFlex using a screw in the last hole. The extender has a pin which fits into the last hole of the EvaFlex or any other hole according to the length that you want. In the back side, you place a low profile flange nut, which is included with the extender. And through the upper hole, you run an M6 truss head screw. Lock it down. And with that done, you've just extended the length of the belt and preserved all of the stiffness. So now I can mount the EvaFlex using the extender to the band clamp. I'm gonna do that with a spring washer, a low profile flange nut, and the M6 button head screw, which comes with the band clamp. So with that tightened down, as you can see, the EvaFlex stands up. I can use the belt and the belt can be pivoted through a small range. If I don't want it to run into this um, gusset on the back, I could cut off the end of the plastic using a bandsaw and then sand the end to profile. I've done that on the other side of the chair. So as you can see here, with the end cut off, it's able to pivot further. However, imagine that you're running into obstacles. I've added a bolt here for that purpose, and that you're not able to pivot the belt down to the side. So side transfers from the chair are gonna be difficult. What I've done to solve that problem is to install the belt extender facing the other direction so that the pin is not fitting into a hole in the EvaFlex, but facing away from it. That allows the EvaFlex to pivot from a second point so that now it can swing out of the way for side transfers. It can swing backwards to clear the entire seating surface. And in use, it can still hold all of the tension of the belt. As you saw in the video, when you are um, fitting an EvaFlex, you first need to measure across the top of the thighs or across the, the fleshy tissue um, where the belt will, will go across and uh, that tells you the size of pad that you need. So what size EvaFlex you need and the padded part of the EvaFlex. But then you need to figure out where it's going to attach. Do you want it at 70 degrees? Where do you want that? That will tell you if it fits or if you need to add this belt extender to make it work properly. So that was illustrated in the video. What I'd also mention is that the EvaFlex belt extender can also be used with webbing belts. If you need to just need, you want it attached very closely to, close to the user and you need to, um, uh, need a little extra extension, then you can use a flat mount or a cinch mount at the top and then attach a webbing belt as well. So just a little uh, pro tip there for you. 
Another solution is a belt mounting extension kit. Now this is very clever. Sometimes, in fact, not just sometimes, often I've found when I'm trying to work with a client in a chair and I find exactly where we want to place the belt and there's, oh, I don't know, the armchair receiver or there's some obstacle already on the chair. Well, this belt mounting extension kit can go, can go around that obstacle. But to better illustrate this, let's take a look at the video. In this case, let's suppose, for example, that the therapist has asked that the hip belt be mounted approximately 30 centimeters from the backrest. I'm going to mark that position here with a piece of tape. Well, 30 centimeters happens to fall directly over this armrest receiver, and so that creates a problem. But I can solve that problem with one of BodyPoint's newest kinds of belt mounting hardware. This is the belt mounting extension strap kit. It comes as a set of four straps with included fasteners. As the name suggests, these can be used to extend the length of the belt, for example with an EvoFlex when you want to bridge over a thicker seat cushion, or they can be combined with an end fitting such as a cinch mount or a flat mount. I've simply attached the flat mount with the included fasteners, and now I can separate these straps in order to straddle an obstacle on the chair. Once I've determined the best mounting location, I can use any of BodyPoint's belt mounting hardware such as a clamp, a bracket, or in this case, because I've got 10 millimeter uh, T-slots in this Invacare power chair, I'm going to use the quarter turn T-slot nuts. After you've tested the installation, the ends can either be bent underneath the seat rail or cut off with scissors to shorten them if necessary. And you're ready to go. So that shows you how you can easily go around an obstacle to mount a belt where you want it. One other thing you can do with this uh, belt mounting extension kit is it's, it's, it's very pliable. You can bend it at 90 degrees and then place the, the bolt underneath. If you've got a solid seat pan, you can drill into the bottom of the solid seat pan and it's another way to attach a, a belt. Uh, I remember two different chairs where I had no other option and this is what I used and it worked very, very well. Now, all this different mounting hardware is available in this BodyPoint belt mounting hardware kit. And I highly recommend it. It's portable. And that way, you don't have to get to, the, the, to where you're attaching the belts and working with the client and find that you don't have the hardware, attachment hardware that you need to mount the postural support. It has lots of different uh, hardware and documentation in it. My favorite thing is it has this little hardware gauge, this blue hardware gauge. And you'll notice that with these little um, spaces here, we'll measure the diameter of the tubing. So you can find out, oh, is this 32 millimeters, 35 millimeters, what is it? And fits right over the tubing, you can tell what size tubing you have or you have these little holes. This will tell you the size of the top or the head of the bolt that you're using or fasteners that you're using. And these little knobs right here, well, this this will stick in and show you the size. Is it is it a six millimeter? Is it a 10 millimeter slotted rail? And it helps you define that. Everything that we've shown you today it, are 
body point products are tested to the ISO standards, ISO ANSI resina standards for postural supports so that you know that you can be assured that they're going to work the way they should and hold up. We have the CE mark. Body point products can also be washed in hot water up to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we have a limited lifetime warranty in our products and our whole manufacturing process uh, is certified to the ISO 9001 levels. For any further technical resources, you can go to bodypoint.com and you'll find instructions and technical bulletins. We have these uh, available in multi, uh, multilingual, many different languages. We have technical bulletins that show specifications, dimensions, and videos. The videos that you've seen in this presentation and many, many more you can find at the Body Point YouTube channel. So I hope that this has been beneficial to you, that you learned a few tips and tricks for attaching hardware. And if you have any questions, you can always find us at bodypoint.com. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy.